welcome back to a new episode of Project Analysis Series. I am Joy and this is Alex. Today, we are going to talk about the Langtoria. Shall we start? Yes, so uh, like what I say in the last episode, uh, this session that we are doing is we are going into very in-depth analysis. Today, we are going through Langtoria. So we will be also going through like what price is a good price for you to go in, what per floor jump is a good gauge for you to understand when you are buying in the launch time. Because these are very important information when you go into the launch. Um, you need to have all the homework done uh, before you go into a better thing. Because a lot of time when we go into a better thing, we will make mistakes like because under pressure, we go and buy something. Maybe a fifth floor unit is better, but we go and buy a 10th floor unit. So today we are going to run through every single details with you, very in-depth analysis. So we are also going to compare between Lantoria, Lantor Modern, Lantor Hue, Hue Lock Green. You know, there's so many projects in this surrounding. So these are all the things that we are going to run through. So today we are going right into Lantoria review. So before we go into it, we want to understand the whole area. Maybe Joy, you want to share with, uh, everyone what is this whole area we are talking about? Mm. Okay, so this Lantoria is a relatively new township. As you can see here, there is mm. a lot of empty plots of land. Some are already sold and some are going to be sold soon. Right here, you need to know about this Lantoria area is that is mostly monopolized by one developer. Alex, do you know who's the developer? Is it Hong Leong and Guaco? Yes. Mm. Only one plot that is very different is under another developer, which is called Soy Build, and that is your mm. lot green. Yes. Okay. Mm. And so, um, let me give you a few backdrop. Langtor Modern was the first to launch here, followed by Langtor Hue residences followed by Hewlock Green and then we have the Langtoria which is what we're going to cover today and after this there will be Langtor Mansion. So something that you need to know is that um, before Langtor Mansion actually will be launched right, Langtoria will be the last plot of land that will not be affected by this ruling called harmonization which we will explain in other videos in our channel so uh, you can have a look over there alright. I'm gonna, not going to dive into detail into that. Okay, so I, I mean you can see here, this is a, quite a new town uh, and the government is putting a lot of effort into this area. La. They're building oh, yes. a brand new private enclave town to, to fit in everything. So they even have parks, all these things that is planned. Mm. So in, in fact, uh, that's why there's quite a lot of interest in this area because uh, buyers are coming in here. Location-wise, it's still quite okay. Plus, they have uh, a brand new town that they, 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 they will be looking forward to. La. But today, we're not going to go in-depth into this Lantor region. We are just going to do comparison between all the projects that we have available. And lastly, within Lantoria, what are the units that we think that will be the best choice if you are looking to buy a property itself in this development. Okay, so uh, we have four developments now that is already launched. Uh, as you can see, all the details are here. What are the main things that we want to look at? Very, very important is first the land size. Okay, because when you look at the land size and the units that is given, uh, it, it shows that how many uh, place in terms of the land itself uh, is uh, cater for the landscaping, the facilities itself. So it doesn't mean that bigger land size is definitely good because sometimes bigger land size come in more units. Mm. Correct now, Joy. Yeah, but I got mm. one question. You see, uh, mm. the number of car parks over mm. here, right? For Langtor Modern and Langtoria, mm. the number of car parks doesn't cater to 100% of the residents. What's your take on this? So, I mean, if you ask me, definitely if you have 100% car park lots, is the best line. Mm. But of course, if you got a lot of one bedroom or a lot of two bedroom, small one, um, car park lots might not be applicable to these owners uh, because they might be renting out and the people there might be looking to uh, take MRT, you know, things like that. But the right. problem with Lantoria is not uh, significantly super near to the MRT comparing to like Hewlock Green or Lantor Hill. So this this is the part that I'm a bit concerned about. I have a different mm. take yep. because mm. for the Langtoria, right, or rather all the projects surrounding Langtor Modern, right, they all have sheltered walkway. And based on what I know or what we know, um, it's about what, five to eight minutes walk mm. from Langtoria to Langtor MRT. So what's your concern actually? Mm, I mean, if, if you ask me, Hewlock Green and Lantor here is the one that is both that's nearest, but they have 100% carpal loss. And Lantoria is a bit further, but they have maybe about 
85% cover lots. I okay. think it's not a big issue. The thing is that I can't figure out why further away they give lesser <laughs> lots. La. So so uh, that's the that's the challenge that you might be facing when you sell because the future buyer that's coming in, they might do a comparison between all these projects. Oh, that's true. Uh, and so, it's all launched around the same time, right? So yes. yeah, that'll be quite a challenge. So during a resale time, I think the buyer will ask, uh, it's not a Makes big sense. problem, but mm. the buyer will definitely ask you like, why this is 85%. So you need to answer to all these things. So how will you answer? Uh, I think we just need to be honest about this whole thing. We just need to tell them that this is some of the disadvantage of Lentoria. Mm. But what is the advantage? The advantage is land size 116,000 square feet. This is 140,000, 180,000, 180,000. But in terms of unit, you look at here, here is 474, here is only 260. So it's Ooh. almost half the unit, but the land size is two third. Less crowded. Less crowded, more facilities, more landscaping. Same thing here, you see, this is 180,000 square feet, uh, mm. is, but the unit uh, is more than double, even for Lantern Modern. So which means that the land size, uh, this is definitely a better, uh, uh, has some advantage over here. Okay, and how about the mm. non-PVVC? I see that yes. that might be something that everyone might be concerned as well because mm. you want to do a lot of hacking, right? When you mm. sell to potential resale buyer. Mm. So in terms of non-PVVC, the, there's another advantage. You see the rest of the three projects are all PVVC except this. So non-PVVC, the, the difference is what? You can hack most of the wall, mm. which means that you can reconfigure. Okay. Second thing, your wall is not as thick as PVVC. Mm. So you know uh, when we buy a property, uh, the square feet, right? Let's say we take a uh, 900 square feet. 900 square feet include all the walls. Eh. The wall space are included inside. Right. Like, so am I right to say mm. if in Langtoria, let's say if the bedroom size mm. is 8.5 square meter, mm. but the actual size might be the same as Langtor Modern's 9 square meter? Possible because they measure based on the wall to wall. Okay, uh, so the wall is thinner uh, in that way. The wall way. is slightly thinner. Okay. So now we go into some of the details of Lentoria. Mm. So what is uh, some of the important things that we are looking at here? Uh, well, I, I guess everyone is concerned about TOP date, which is around 2027. And mm. I believe most of the projects here were TOP around the same time. Mm, yes, so I think Lentora is slightly earlier than the rest because uh, it's smaller, smaller, mm. and it's non PVVC. Mm. So all these things plays a, a part into it, lah. Huh? Mm. Next, where is actually Lentoria? Is slightly further from the MRT. This is actually Lentor Hill, so it's just a bit further away la, just a street across la. I think this is something that a lot of parents will be asking you know mm. because one of the most uh, famous school or rather popular school around this area is CHIJ St Nicholas so actually not all the properties in the Langtor town right is within one kilometer from this school so what's your take on being close to a popular school do you think it will really affect the property price uh, I've done some research and I realized that actually near school, it doesn't pull up your prices. La. I even go very in-depth into an analyzing uh, one block that's nearer, one block that is out of one click. Uh. Uh, that reminds me, I think there's uh, something like um, Jetscape. Because yes. Jetscape, there are certain um, mm. blocks, right? That's within one kilometer from Ai Tong, I think. Mm. Yeah. So we found out that actually those that is nearer to within a one kilometer from Ai Tong doesn't really necessarily outperform the rest. Mm. In fact, they are on par in terms of profit margin. Mm. Okay, that's so, interesting. But when you're near schools, it's easier for you to sell like, yourself faster. Like. Mm. You definitely slightly more demand. Like. So this is still a good thing. Like. So uh, now we want to go straight into Lentoria in terms of site plan and the distribution chart mm. and explaining all the floor plans to you. What are the pros and cons and what are the units that we will definitely want to put our focus on. Yes. So this is a site plan for Lentoria. Pretty straightforward, mm. huh? Mm. Only what, three blocks? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think it's easy to see at one glance, uh, mm. right? So I think something to note over here. We'll yes, something very stuff. important okay. here. Always when we want to buy a development, this is one of the most important factors. How many units of supply for each unit type? Like the one bedroom got 23, mm. two bedroom got 120. Because I always said, we can uh, guess the demand. Okay, but we can't determine the demand because we can't be sure about what is the, going to be the demand. Right. Uh, we can say that maybe Lento area will have more four bedroom mm. buyers. Correct. But okay. one thing that is confirmed one is the supply. So, but for Lento area, you don't just want to see the supply for Lento area. 
you want to see the supply of all the projects that is in the region so that you understand what are the type of units that is safer to buy. La. I mean, that's one thing. La, huh? Is it because they are all launched very closely, like back to back? Yeah, so they will all take kids very, very close to each other, which mm. is a concern also. Uh, which means that when I sell, uh, another project will be my uh, competitors or so I'm not just competing within my own development. So mm. I need to understand how many units are there in all this development that we are talking about. So next, uh, this is the distribution chart. Yes. Okay, I think one thing about site plan is because they are very flat. So you might assume that they are of the same height. But because Langtor Town is under an area where it's under government, so I remember you shared that there are certain requirements, right? Like the buildings have to be one tall, one short. Is there any reason to that? So the government actually want to build Langtor Town as a whole town together, la, not just individual projects. So all the projects have to form into the whole flow of the town. So they have a certain plan mm. for all the developers, like which uh, site have to build which floor. That's why you can see one block that is shorter and two blocks that is at the 17th floor. La, huh? So That's these two blocks are 17th floor, this block is on the 8th floor. Mm. So you, you go to Lentor Hill, there is also like tall and short block also. Yes. Uh, so Correct. it's the same thing uh, to, to have very the flow interesting in. Because yeah. I, think, I think mainly government is seldom involved in planning mm. of residential towns. So this is one of the very rare few residential towns that are involved. And for this Langtoria itself, right, for the level one, units on level one, which is the ground floor, and also the highest floor, they all comes with additional void area. So Alex, what's your take on this void area? Because void area, mm. as we know, right, with the higher ceiling, usually we might be need to pay a premium for it. Okay, so what we understand from the developer for Lantoria, right, mm. is that they are not going to... Uh, because usually it's like that, I just... Uh, let's say this is a plan of uh, 900 square feet. Uh. Oh, this is second floor. Uh. Then if it's on the ground floor, uh, it will be 1100 square feet. Why, why is that so? Because they actually count the void area. So which means that the living room have a void area which is a very high ceiling, 5.5 over meter. The area is double count. So living area is maybe 200 square feet plus 200 square feet. That's why it's become 1,100 square feet. Mm -hmm. But for Lentora, they are telling us that even the top floor and the ground floor or whichever will be the same size. So which means that this is 900. Even with the void area, this will be 900. So in, in fact, when you listen mm -hmm. to this, uh, it, Does that mean the price is going to be the same for level 1 and 2? So that's why what we are trying to say here is that sometimes developer can price it differently. They give you the same size, but they increase the per square foot for the ground floor mm. and the top floor. So which means that you can see, uh, maybe the second floor is uh, 2,000 per square foot. The ground floor can be 2,002, 2,003 per square foot. Mm. Uh, so you have to still calculate based on your, your whether is it worthwhile. To me, I feel paying a 5 to 10% premium might be might be still doable. Yes. Anything more than 10 is definitely no go. Anything less than 5 is definitely a good buy that you can look at. Mm. Uh, and also, just you know, for everyone's info, right? The void area doesn't apply in the living area or dining area. It applies throughout the entire house, meaning your bedrooms as well. So mm. this is quite, I would say, rare in today's market. Because usually the void area will be only applicable to the living area. Mm. So this one, even your bedroom, all your bedrooms, all master bedroom, all have. So which wow. means that... Cannot imagine. That's this why I, I, I give a 10% range. La. Uh, because usually if only the living area, I mean, we also don't want to pay extra for that. Mm. But this one, really, you got a lot more space. Mm. But bear in mind, the challenge is... You need a uh, ladder. I don't think ladder can solve the issue. La. You need it's to really hire high, people like, to come and change light for you because it's, okay. it's really high. Huh? So that's one thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, with this, we are going next into the layout. So layout wise, first we will start with the one bedroom. Huh? So one bedroom layout, we have only two types of layout. So yes. maybe Joy, you want to share on this? Yes, for the one bedroom over here, um, as we can see just now, right, it's extremely rare. Not only in the Langtoria itself, not only in this development, but in the entire Langtor town, which we will show more in depth later, okay? So for the one bedroom over here, comes only in one size, as you can see, um, but in two different layouts. And they are either facing the pool, which is inner facing, or facing towards uh, Langtor Mansion, which is the upcoming development over there. So, um, um, the main difference over here, right, is just this part. 
which means because this is on stack two, stack two is over here, it's the pool facing, which means right, you will not be able to actually look to the other side from your balcony because it's blocked. Other than that, I really don't see any mm. huge difference. Mm. But frankly, because I think the price range for this one bedroom in this area is around 1.2 to even 1.3. Is it a bit high for one big room in an area like that? What's your take on this? Mm, so later we will run through that, but before we go into the numbers, right? In terms of the layout, you can't see the difference, correct? But there is one thing that you need to notice. There's three stacks available for one big room, which is the five and six are facing Lantern Mansion, which means facing outside. And the stack two is facing pool. Most of the time, mm. stack two will be the most expensive because you mm. have a better facing. La. So you got to understand that uh, in this scenario, uh, straightforward recommendation is five and six. Why? Because when you buy a one bedroom, nobody cares about the view. Your tenants will not say that, oh, you got a pool view, I pay you $200, $300 more. Uh, maybe it's mm. easier for you to rent out, but they will not pay you extra for the pool view. Mm. If you talk about investment-wise, cheapest unit for one bedroom is the way to go. La. But now we look at the surrounding supply first. Then we will go into the price point. So you can mm. see from here. Yeah, I think Langtong mm. model is very sold out. Actually quite mm. limited like, right now in the market. So in terms of the units left, uh, you see Lantor Modern left uh, one unit, Lantor Hill left eight unit, Hill Lock Green left six unit. But I'm not interested in how much unit is left. I'm interested in, in total. So you add everything together, there's mm. only 182 units uh, with four developments, uh, which is quite rare uh, because usually one bedroom will take out a big chunk. Yes, correct. But here you can see Lantor Modern 63, which means it's only slightly more than 10%. Mm. Of I the whole development. The other like two beta, mm. three beta or four beta, they are about in the range of five, six hundred units. So it's really mm. very low in supply of it. So mm. obviously it's got to do with government's planning. Do you think so? Because it's man mainly this town, right? Mm. It's mainly for own say people. Yeah, so I mean if you ask me, definitely in this mm. town I would recommend more towards the big units. But Looking at the supply, the one bedroom is something that you can consider because I don't think there will be any issue in renter. I mean, selling will not be that easy because there's not so much demand. But mm -hmm. with so little supply, uh, I don't think you will see a very big problem. I mean, now I have, I have, I have been helping my client to sell a lot of units, uh, uh, some of them in the CBD. Mm. The bigger challenge in the CBD to sell a one bedroom is there is too many people who is selling together. So here, I don't see that there will be this issue that all the units will be together in the market at one shot. Mm. So I think you are still safe in terms of the supply that we have. But most important, I think, is the price point. So mm. today we are going to go through you. what price point I think is safe to still go in for Lantoria. Yeah. Okay, I see that the mm. Langtor Modern, Langtor Hill, you know, Hill Lock are all within the range of 1.1, right? Mm. So today, what's considered a safe price? 900,000? Nine hundred is definitely a uh, very safe lah because uh, we don't just look at the average ah. Uh. Average is this. The most important one look at is this. The maximum one point two eight for Lantor Modern, Lantor Hill done one point three five seven, which you can almost buy a two bedroom uh. So I, I I also cannot really understand. But Hill Lock Green one point two five two, huh? So which means that this price is accepted in this region. Anything that I buy below this price will be quite safe. Okay. That will be your margin? Uh, in a way. So which means that if I buy at 1.05, there's a possibility I can sell at 1.25. I wouldn't say confirm, but there's a possibility because it's done before. Ma. Mm. Uh, but okay. just now you say 900 plus thousand. I can tell you it's impossible in Lentoria. Why? Because uh, Lentor Hill uh, is done at 945. Uh, their unit is, I think it's 474 square feet. Lentoria's smallest is 538. Oh, that's true. Mm. Uh, so 538, uh, you add on. Uh, I. I feel uh, anything below 1.08 is quite a good safe buy, okay? Anything above, try not to go beyond 1.15. Anything beyond 1.15, I don't think you want to take so much risk. Lah, huh? So, a uh, good range is below 1.08. Anything slightly above 1.0 to 1.15, I think this one still can consider if you, are, if you have a, a certain budget that you're looking at. If not, then we can look at other departments, other units itself. Lah. Uh, but if you only got this price range, uh, this is the price range that you should go for. Okay? Okay. 
because we did this because we want to know eh, what are our competitors you know what is the per level jump so we have a rough gauge so like what Alex said earlier right if the price start from 1.08 for example mm. average right is about 9k increment mm. so how does that translate how will that actually affect buyer in this sense Okay, so why we did up this pricing strategy uh, is actually for you all. Uh. So next time when Lentoria launch, uh, you all really want to go and buy, you know at what price point you will buy high floor. At what price point you will buy low floor. How to determine that? That is the most mm. important. Uh. So how do we determine? So you look at here, the Lentor model is transacted at 1.072. Okay, the lower starting from. Per floor jump is estimated. Uh, uh, I based on 9,000 is I take the average hour uh, so which means that per floor jump is about 0.9% uh, for Lantor Modern correct then for Lantor Hill external facing 5,000 jump for 945 is how much about 0.5% okay for uh, inner facing is about 0.7% per floor jump for Hewlock Green, it's also about 0.8, 0.9%. Huh? So, you can see the, the, the range here. If you can find anything be, between uh, 0.5 to 0.7 uh, or even lower than 0.5, uh, uh, then go buy higher floor. That's very interesting. Uh, but if anything that exceed 0.8, uh, uh, go as low as possible. I so mean. this is just to ensure that you are relatively safe. Like you are not mm. the one purchasing yeah. one of the highest, right? At the highest price. I mean, we, we look at the surrounding, we understand uh, the rest of the development, how much they are paying for higher floor units. La. Main thing, we want to determine that we don't want to be overpaying. La. I think that's the most important that we want to make sure. So in short, if we can buy lower in terms of per floor jump, uh, comparing to the rest, uh, we have a safer safer entry uh, and we still get a high floor unit. La. But end of the day, you still have to be determined by if I get a pool view unit, do I need a high floor unit? I mean, mm. these are the things that you still need to think about. Uh, it's not just a, a fast track rule, la, which means that if a higher floor unit, the facing is lousier than a lower floor unit, then go for lower floor. Uh, wow, it sounds very tedious to just select based on this pricing strategy. I mean, real estate is really a very big investment. La, so I think we need to really go in depth into all these things. La, okay. So next, we are going to the two bedroom analysis. Okay. Hmm. So first one is the B1 layout. So two bedroom mm. comes in two different sizes. We have the 700 square feet, which is what mm. we are showing right now. And afterwards, we'll show you the 732 square feet. So for the 700 square feet, there is only one layout type, which is what you are seeing here. It's a very typical two bedroom layout. Yeah, Alex, would you want to further elaborate on this layout? Because mm. I think as agents, we have seen so many layouts and to mm. me, this is just another two bedroom layout. I think definitely there isn't a wow factor for this layout, but of course, because of the 700 square feet, there is a chance that it will be slightly lower in prices. Mm. But the main concern, definitely, I can tell you, I wouldn't consider this tech 13 and 20. Okay. Is it because it's facing pool? Because this are uh, only the pool facing. So even if it's 700 square feet, they're smaller than the other of the two bedroom. If I add on a 5% premium, uh, this will be more expensive really. Don't need to, don't need to argue it. So, which means that I buy a smaller unit at a higher price. Uh, and bear in mind, two bedroom bu buyers are mostly still for investment. So, I think there's also a good amount of people here buying for own stay, no? Two bedroom, I don't think there's so much. The supply of two bedroom is the most. La. But I think there will be a quite huge price disparity because the rest of the two bedroom are all facing here, which is facing the Yo Chu Kang Road, which means that this side should be the lowest price unit. Because facing the main road lah. Ah, because mm. the other side, just now the one bedroom is facing Lantor Modern. That side will not be so much of a difference in terms of pricing. But this side definitely will have. Because the pricing will be cheapest here. This is second cheapest, then the uh, most expensive will be inside lah. So uh, now you're comparing the cheapest and the most expensive difference so I think the premium will be quite a lot maybe about 5 to 8% actually it makes sense yeah. because for the two bedroom right mm. it will be facing the shorter block in front which means on certain level if I recall it's about level 11 or 12 mm. and above right you also get unblocked view mm. if we were to look at the other two bedrooms okay mm. this is the 732 square feet layout so there's three different layouts as you can see here right it's all kitchenettes there is no enclosable kitchen which 
we will touch on this later as we compare to our competitors nearby. So the one main thing to point out for this uh, two bedroom layout is that the middle one, type B3, there is a window. Do you think that this window will actually make any difference? Because that's possibly the only thing that is the real difference between these three. And also because the last one, right, the type B4S, there is an additional study space. And given the same size, if they manage to carve out another study space, would you prefer to go for B4? Mm, I mean, there's quite a number of questions they ask. Our first one is the window. I, I definitely do not think this window is going to make a huge difference. Uh. So what difference does window make? Uh, is when you have an enclosed kitchen. Then when you don't come with a window, your kitchen will be super dark. True. Okay. But show so that one, we're all very nice. It's but you need to on the light well when lit. you go into the kitchen. Uh. Yep. But when you have a window, sometimes daytime you do not need to on the light. Okay, but for this, this is part of your living room. So you on the light. Example for this unit, on light here, it will be shining the whole thing. Ah, sometimes the light will be two side together one, correct? So when I on it, the window doesn't make any difference to me. So it's not a game changer. It's not a game changer, but I would say that this B three layout have one advantage is they got a bit of privacy here So your neighbor they peep in they can't see your unit so this is the advantage of B3. And but I would still mm. prefer B4 mm. because even though the kitchen might be smaller, mm. however, I feel that the study space will be a very good space mm. for a storeroom. What do you think? Yeah, so I think my first choice will be B4. Later, we are going to do a summary at the mm. end of the session uh, to run through if you're, why do we think this way, which are the units that you, you can be uh, looking at and how do you look at all these things huh? so here B4 why is it good because this study area although it doesn't make sense to have a study like that but mm. this can work as a storeroom uh, so first choice B4 second choice B3 third choice is B2 and fourth choice is B1 because of the pricing so that's how I will rate the two bedroom so now we are going through number of units of the two bedroom. Wow. That's a lot, right? Just now we yes. only have like 100 plus for the one bedder, but two mm. bedroom, look at this number. Yeah. How so, do I sell in future? <laughs> so Hewlock Green still got 103 left. Okay. In total, whole land area got 763 units. This is as of now, ah. Uh, Mm. I have not even included like Langtor mentioned and the upcoming mm. projects. So it seems like there are really quite a huge number of two bedroom here. Will yes. selling be an issue in future? The main thing we need to understand, supply come in two ways. First way is the number of units here. Second thing is based on the number of units, how many of them will want to sell? How many of them will want to rent? How many of them will want to stay? So if let's say I have 700 units of four bedroom, for example, usually there will only be five to 10% of the units that are selling because why four bedroom owners who buy they stay. mostly will stay. Okay. But mm. two bedroom buyers are different. Two bedroom, there is still a huge per percentage uh, that is buying for investment, which means they want to rent and they want to sell. So I guess upon TOP, there will be a lot of people selling. Uh, in a way, we can put it this way. Mm. Let's say a 30%, uh, but even a 20%, we got 150 units in the market just based on this project. Mm. So that's uh, the, the part that you need to think about. So which means mm. that if I'm looking to buy a two bedroom in Lentor region, my holding period need to be a bit longer. Long runway. I might not be able to sell uh, at a good price mm. and it will be time. So this is something that we need to think about. Mm. Oh, but of course, you still need to compare. Like, later, we are going to compare the layout between all these projects. Uh, then you will see. Uh, do they have an advantage? And what price do they buy at? So how, what price should you be going in? What price should you be not buying? So next, we have the difference between the Lentoria and Lentor, Lentor Modern. Modern. Yes. So mm. for the Lentoria, um, obviously just now we have shared the two bedroom, right? So for the Lentor Modern, the main difference, as you can see here, is that all the Lentor Modern um, units comes with a flexi space. Okay, means all of them have got like a flexi or like a study area. If you look, were to look at the layout, based on the same size, Langtor Modern actually have an enclosable kitchen. Mm. And can you see that actually yeah, yeah. in the flexi area and both the kitchen area, there is window. So I personally feel that this is very livable for a young couple mm. or even like a you know retiree. I would definitely prefer this over Langtoria. So if you look at this very clearly in a two bedroom setup, uh, this is definitely a more own stay layout. 
because I have all the things that I need. I can enclose my kitchen properly because I have my window here. I have a window in my study area. I have a window in my uh, common toilet. But the master don't have. Lah. But I mean, this is really good enough. Which means that if I want to buy for own stay, uh, I will usually choose this if next time they sell. Oh, so that's your challenge. Which means that uh, they will take away all your own stay buyer first. Uh, which is usually I would prefer to sell to own stay buyer lah, because they will pay more. So uh, comparison wise, definitely Lentor Modern have an edge in terms of the layout for two bedroom. Uh. Next, we are going to see Lentor Hill and Lentor Rio. Yes, Lentor Hill residences, um, well, the layout comes with traditional, like your typical um, layout and also the dumbbell layout. So they also have enclosable kitchen. But the only thing here is that their study area in the Lentor Hill um, is not separated from the big room, which means that technically you're only just getting a bigger bedroom, but not a separate store or study area. So um, what's your personal take on this? If we look at this 721 square feet, right, you can see that it's enclosable, but you have to do quite a lot of work. Huh? You look at the floor plan, you understand because this part is not covered up. So you need to even cover up the front part all the way back. Oh, very different from Lantau Modern. So I would say this is still quite an open concept kitchen and the, the toilet all don't have window. Lah. So the layout. Maybe Lentor Hill will be slightly better, but it's very comparable comparing to Lentoria. So uh, it's down to prices. Uh, I, I don't think there's a strong edge of Lentor Hill in terms of layout itself. Lah. So next we have the Hill Lock Green that we are talking about. So for Hewlock Green, right, um, similarly, this one, they do have enclosable kitchen, not like your Langtor Hill mm. residences. Mm. And for the study area, it's nicely separated from your master bedroom. Mm. So I do have a preference for Hewlock Green in this sense. Mm. Do, are you thinking the same as well? Mm, yes, but uh, of course, the size also matters. Lah. This is 753 square feet. Lah. So it's coming down to the prices. If the price is quite similar, I prefer you lot. So in, in short, two bedroom, my first preference is Lantau Modern, but no more. Huh, so, fully so, so, fully, sold. Uh, fully mm. sold. So so you have to buy from resale. Second is Hewlock Green. Third can be Lantoria or Lantau Hill. So I think these two can be comparable, but uh, uh, the first two choices will be Lantau Modern and uh, Hewlock Green. Lah. But of course, down to the prices. So next we are going into the price uh, jump first in terms of the two bedroom. How much do I think is something that we should be looking at the, the higher floor and the lower floor. So you can see from here, Lantau Modern, 10 to 13,000 jump for two bedroom, which is quite high, uh, which means that it's about 1% jump per floor. So if you realize uh, just now the one bedroom and the two, two bedroom, Lentor Modern tends to have higher jump in terms of perform. Of course, it's integrated, right? Mm, I mean, doesn't mean That's that it's integrated, argument. we will have higher per floor jump. Uh. But their pricing strategy is a bit different. Uh. So you need to understand how the developer price. Because sometimes they will price based on uh, their average of the cost, which means that uh, the starting price, uh, you will realize that Lentor Modern starting price uh, can be cheaper than Lentor Hill. But the per floor joint is higher. So which means that Lentor Modern, uh, bottom and the top floor can have huge difference. Lentor Hill, uh, the bottom and top floor can be closer, but the starting price is more expensive. This means that if I were to buy Lentor Modern, uh. I would buy the lower floor. Yes. But if I were to buy Lentor Hill residences, I can, I can start from mid to high floor. You can see the starting price for a two bedroom in Lantau Hill is 1356. But the per floor jump is 7005. So it's about 0.6%. So maybe Lantau Modern's every one level jump equals to Lantau Hill residences every two level jump. Something like that. Something like uh, that. So the, right. the two plus study is about 0.6%. Uh, so it's, it's averagely about 0.6%. Look at Hill Lock Green is about 0.8%. So you can see, uh, it's quite a standard range. Huh? Lentor Modern is the highest per floor jump. Lentor Hill is the lowest and Hill Lock Green is in between. So we do not know about Lentoria yet. But if we fall between, like I say, between Lentor Hill and Hill Lock Green or below Lentor Hill, uh, then you want to go for it. Now we look at the three bedroom layout. So three bedroom layout, what do we have? 
three bedroom layout we have the very compact one which is 915 square feet um, this will be facing Langtor mansions okay and for this layout right we have a proper three bedroom kitchen good size and that's basically it mm. there's only eight units and mm. it's quite limited so uh, with a window here la, and possible and closable la, you need to do something la, oh. but I think this is still a very decent layout that we can work with. It's very compact. Mm. And 915, we can fit in so many things. Uh, I think this, this is quite good. And most important, only 8 units. Later, mm. we'll look at the rest of the 3 bedroom. You'll understand why this is my first choice. Compact itself to who? Compact itself to people who want to buy something that is practical. Okay. I want cheap. I want to be able to utilize the space. So I don't need to be too grand or too nice. But mm. I need to be cheap. So 915 for compact is considered a small size with all the things that is provided because uh, there's some compact that is maybe 936, 980 plus square feet also have. Oh, so but, 915 is considered on the lower side. But this compact 3 right, it doesn't come with any storeroom. Do you think there will be an issue here? Uh, because compact 3 usually do not have storeroom. Right? Only premium will have. Right? That's why I say people will buy 915 for what? Won't say, but limited budget. Limited budget. So most important to them is what? Price point. Mm. But of course, sometimes they build very small size, but they compromise on maybe the, the one of the room only can put single bed. But you can see this layout don't have don't have this issue. I see done. So now we look at the other three, which is the 936 square feet. Yeah. For the 936, right, as you can see across the board, right, none of the kitchen are actually enclosable. It's all kitchenettes. So for three bedroom with kitchenettes, personally, I feel that I would totally not get this for own stay mm. because how do I do my heavy cooking? Every time when I cook, then, you know, the house will get smell, mm. right? So for the three bedroom in this sense, right, it's road facing and also pool facing. So what's your take on this? Uh, 936 is definitely not something that I favor. Mm. Uh, looking at the layout itself, I mean, if you really don't have, you need to buy, you want to buy this, uh, Maybe you want to focus more on the road facing and or, or I would say the land door mansion facing which is a C4. Why? Because it will be slightly cheaper. La. Uh, so so you still got a chance that you can make money. I I, I mean doesn't say that this type of layout cannot, la, because I've been selling some of the units like that in the market. Some of them who bought Affinity, they still make three hundred plus thousand dollars. Mm. But uh it's a bit tougher to sell, I would have to say that. Uh, so now we are going into the uh premium layout yes which and is, this will be the biggest right 1119 yes. hmm. square feet and so for the premium layout right you can see that it comes with a very a sizable kitchen hmm. utility and yard but the main difference over here hmm. is your living and dining area so instead of the normal like the portrait size that we saw just now right this will be a landscape but one of the downside i would say is a long corridor hmm. right so because when I enter the house, of course, the units will feel very narrow. What do you mm. think? Because if you go to the show flat, right, the, what the show flat did was that they put mirrors. So I think the, it did enhance the space. So interior design does help. But in general, buying such layout, even though it's a very good living and dining landscape size, but with the long corridor, do you think it will affect the resale value? Uh, I don't think it will be a huge... Uh, problem. La. I mean, uh, people would prefer without long corridor, but there is a lot of plus point for this 1119. First, a landscape uh, living room, which is very rare in a three bedroom. Second, they come with a study with a window, which is also very rare. Between this road face C5P and C6P, I would prefer a C5P. Why? Because facing road, firstly, it will, will be significantly cheaper. Second, the entrance is like that. Same size, la, but this entrance is not straight. So this one, that is privacy. And you can actually put a small chair here so that before you go out, you can wear your shoes. But this one totally, you can't do much. Huh? So this is totally wasted. This mm. one still can do a bit here and there. Of course, I'm not saying that I, I love this long layout, but I'm, I'm trying to tell you that there's more plus point than minus for this three bedroom, one, one, nine square feet. Okay, so, uh, but we are going into the prices. Huh? So uh, this is a pricing strategy for a three bed in other developments. Surprisingly, or Lantor Modern, the it's very jump. okay. So it's about how much? 0.6% average, all of them. So 0.6%, which means mm -hmm. that if you are still within the 0.6, 
I would say, I mean, there's no high and fast rules. You should go high or lower. But if you are below 0.6, uh, I think it's good that you can go higher. Well. Okay, but uh, if you are more than 0.6, you might not want to go for the higher floor okay so so this is for three bedroom so next we are going into the four bedroom layout okay we have a few first two is the d1 and d2 which is the 1206 the four bedroom classic right mm. so for the four bedroom classic what you're seeing here is that the living and dining is portrait mm. but you can see that the uh, floor plan itself is more of a, like a dumbbell because they have the junior master over on one side and the other three bedrooms over on the other side and proper yard and utility space as well so if we were to look at the other four bedroom premium this will be slightly different because of the living and dining space itself so do you think this will be a factor that will actually affect the resale value again uh, yes but like i say in Lentor we cannot just compare within Lentoria. Uh, of course, we want to compare within inside, but we need to understand the surrounding also. What is our competitors? What type of units they have? Mm. What type of layout they have? Mm. Would they be better than us? In short, uh, I will put it this way. Uh, it's surprising that I say this uh, because usually I will prefer this style layout with a landscape. But in Lentoria, I will prefer this 1206 square feet. I'll explain the reason to you why later. First, I just explain the layout a bit to you. Uh. You can see very clearly that they have uh, almost everything that you need. Okay, They have the utility room with the window. Very rare. I mean for this D1. Or D2 don't have. Huh? Uh, they have a junior master. They have a yard area, which you can see here is a white color, which means that here is actually a low wall. That you can you can do your laundry everything uh, because outside is your AC latch lah, huh? so you can actually do all these things that you need to okay so most of the things that you need is all provided for the 1206 square feet 4 bedroom and key thing the 3 bed premium is 1119 the 4 bed is 1206 so the price point between these two will be quite close uh, so when it's quite close it makes sense for 4 bedroom that's why I would say come to this it's also down to practicality hmm. but this layout 1345 is bigger but it doesn't place into the part that is super grand or whichever because first thing the junior master is here which make the whole place look a bit narrow if this one is being pushed up uh, this lane is uh, cut short uh. Be nicer. this part is shorter uh, uh, mm. then it will be nicer uh, but the, the whole configuration is not the best lah, huh? plus the study uh, got window here but you face your own wall mm. so you, it will be very dark also lah, so the window doesn't serve any purposes lah, huh? uh, premium wise I don't think uh, it's the best but why I will do a comparison for you so you see Lentor Modern and Lentor Hue uh, these are the two comparisons uh. so you can see very clearly already comparing to just now what we have uh, these two have a better layout okay so Lentor Hue what, what is the advantage they have a, a very proper uh, uh, kitchen area okay and they have window here glass here which means that you make the unit bigger but the setback is that of course when they come in uh, my view of the living room is like that so which means that my living room size is almost like that it's still bigger than Lentoria. Lah, huh? So in terms of grandness, uh, this is still better. Uh, so this is mm. average at about 2.7 million. But now we look at Lentor Modern. Uh, uh, this is one of the best layout. Uh. You see, uh, you come in here. Uh, this whole piece uh, is a glass panel. So which means that my view uh, is like... Uh, so instantly you will feel the grandness. You will feel that it's super big. Uh, you see the difference in the size that we are looking at. And they have a proper study with window the door is here if I shift the door here this one can become a walk-in wardrobe everything you talk about grand this is in place but of course the price is high correct it's about 400,000 difference what I'm trying to tell you here is that the 1345 is actually caught in between why? because I don't have practicality because I will be not super cheap true for the 1345 actually I would rather ah. take Lentor Hill residences, yeah. right? You appear mm. bigger as well. Yes. Lentor Hill and the 1345 uh, uh, were loose to Lentor model in terms of feeling good. So it's like caught in between. Uh. 
Then the one two o six will come in place when there is buyers who need to buy something, but they have a very limited budget. So I will prefer the one two o six for lentor rear mm. for bedroom. Okay. So it seems that for Langtoria, we are going for the more like practical reason. We are not banging huge on the granners because mm. Langtor Modern have got the granners, right? For the four bedroom. Right. Mm. So now next time we will look at this. Hewlock Green. Hewlock Green. Um, mm. it, it is quite similar uh, to to Langtoria. It's a like combination of Langtoria and and Hewlock uh, and and Langtor Hill uh, because uh, they have a junior master which uh, Langtor Hill do not have. But uh, the kitchen wise is very close to actually Lantau Hill. La. So hmm. uh, not bad, but I would still prefer uh, Lantau Modern uh, in terms of brightness. Then uh, practicality 1206 Lantau Red. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So now we are going into four bedroom price strategy. You can see Lantau Modern hmm. again suddenly it shoot out again. So it's $16,000 hmm. jump per floor, which is about 0.55%. Okay. But Lantor Hewa uh, is about 0.35 percent. Hewlock Green uh, is 0.8 percent. Hewlock Green is very all 0.8 uh, for one, two, three, Interesting. four. Interesting. Uh, oh, but Lantor Modern have a lot of range difference. So mm. you can see actually from all these pricing strategy, Lantor Hewa uh, by high floor makes sense. That's for the big ones. Later. So how much Lantoria jump will be a good range? Anything that fall between 0.35 percent to 0.55 percent will be safe to 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 go for higher floor good unit uh, i think you can stretch a bit if it's 0.6 or 0.65 maybe you can still stretch a bit because four bedroom buyers hmm. views are quite important next time yourself yeah but it seems like hmm. at this point right hmm. for budget reason i will go for length of you but for feeling good reason mm. I will go for Langtor Modern mm. yeah so the price point for Langtoria really have to be really careful mm. with your entry price definitely mm. so uh, I think in terms of the four bedroom compact you want to go for the cheapest unit but like mm. I say if a second and a 10th floor unit the price difference uh, is less than 0.4% per floor jump uh, I will still go for the higher floor because bear in mind I'm still selling to a lot of stay buyers even though That's they true. are practical uh, they will still want something that, you know, good view. Lah. So this is important comparing to the one and two bedroom. Okay. Mm. So now we are just going to run through the summary and we we'll end off the video today. Uh, in summary, one bedroom, recommended stack, stack five, six. Because mm. um, it will be cheaper facing than the one that is pool facing. Mm. And for the one bedroom itself, right, um, we are mainly targeting investors. So investors, all we care about is the you and also the most value buy. So that's pretty straightforward. And so for the two for bedroom. For the two bedroom, mm. the first choice will be stack 10 and 16. Okay. Second choice will be 11 and 15. So we will show you why. Because 10 and 16 is the one that come with the study, which is just now why we are sh uh, showing you. Because all these will be almost same pricing in terms of per square foot. Because they are the same facing. And the same size. Yes. Mm. So 10, 16 have a slightly better layout uh, because the, you have a study which you can act as a storeroom. Okay, uh, and 11 and 15 is the one that come with the window. But the main thing is that we have the privacy here. Mm. Uh, so uh, first choice here, 10, 16, second choice, 11 and 15. Now we go to the three bedroom. Three bedroom recommended stack seven for compact uh, and stack 18 for premium. Compact is because of the size, the, mm. the layout. The day one, five square feet. Hmm. 18 is because of also the entrance like just now where I shared because the entrance you got some privacy that you have so now we can see here uh, compact why we recommend because this is a decent layout that uh, will be would be very suitable hmm. for people who have certain budget they're working with la. and also this is hmm. pretty limited um, because it's on hmm. the lower low rise uh, hmm. one so only 8 units la. why I would say that the premium for uh, Lantoria is good la. I found uh, here to here uh, is about 5.1 meter uh, for uh, three bed premium, surprisingly here to here for four bed is also five point one meter. Uh, so the one three four five and the one 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 nine, the width of the living room is the same. So which means uh, when I walk into a four uh, and I walk into a three uh, the initial feeling is almost the same. No difference. Mm. Which means, which means that this one will make the buyer feel that eh, uh, actually I buy this also not not mm. bad. And the study is like that. So it's open up, but this study is blocked. 
Oh, so actually the three have a very good advantage. So one 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 nine is something that I think you should be putting a bit of focus in if you want to buy something that is you feel grand, you feel good. This is one of the key uh, layout that you want to put your focus on. Uh, four bedroom, one two zero six. Why one two zero six? We have pretty much explained that earlier. I hope today the video will be good for all of you because we have run through not just floor plan. Uh, but we also compare the surrounding for them. A lot of cross analysis. Mm. That's all we have for Langtoria. If you guys feel that this is really useful for you, please continue to follow us on our channel so that in future when the new projects are being launched, we will progressively add onto this presentation. Uh, so if you are, want to understand more, just like and subscribe to our channel. We will see you soon. Okay, bye! bye.